Now let's look at the ruling. Knowledge of the actual taj- tajweed rules is a fard kifaya. It is a fard kifaya. This is a an obligation that is upon the community. Okay, meaning that at least one person in every community must know it. So, every every Muslim must know how to recite the Quran with the tajweed of. Uh, Surah Al-Fatiha and one or two surahs to pray with. He doesn't need to know the theory. But one person in every community must know the rules as well. He must memorize the names of the rules and how they apply for at least one recitation. Okay, In which case the bulk of the Muslim world relies upon hafs on Asim. Now you might be wondering, well, you hear so many people make the claim that the Quran was actually... The, the, the recitation of Quraysh is actually Warsh an Nafa, right? That's a fact. Okay? Warsh was an Egyptian scholar. He went and he studied with Nafa. Nafa was the Qari of, there's two Nafa's in Medina. One was the servant of Ibn Umar. Imam Malik studied fiqh under him. But no, this is Nafa the reciter. Okay? And Imam Malik uh, considered his recitation to be the Sunnah to recite with because that was the recitation of all the people of Medina and the scholars of Medina, father from son, from grandfather to the Prophet peace be upon him. So you might now ask, well then why didn't that spread? Well it didn't spread because where was the Khilafah? The Khilafah moved to Iraq. So the Sahaba that were in Iraq, they became, and they weren't all from Medina. They weren't all from Quraysh. So they had their own recitations and their own dialects. And so that's what got transmitted in Iraq. So from Kufa, spread this recitation, and then it became the recitation of the Hanafis, which then became the method of the Ottomans and the Mughals and the Abbasids before them. So these three great empires of Islam and the Safavids before they became Shia also were Hanafis. All right? The Safavids were a Hanafi dynasty that became Shia very early on in Persia. So these three, these four major empires or, or uh, uh, ruling bodies, applied the uh, recitation of Hafs and Asim because usually, when when someone a government rules, when um, you know Sultan rules, he needs one recitation, one madhab, so that the the courts and the mosques are uniform, so that the people don't get confused because you have to go at the pace of the slowest. Right? So in the universities, they could study everything they want. At the colleges and the, uh, the madrasa system, they can study all the madhabs and all the recitations. So the scholars always did that. But they tended to, for the sake of the public, apply one official recitation and one official um, uh, law. So they pick a madhab and they pick a recitation. And just like every country has an official language, right? An official spelling and an official time. Uh, time, whatever the you know official time zone, whatever. So you have to do that. So that's what they did, and that's why the recitation of Hafs spread far and wide.